Mr. Speaker, yung daw pong till death do us part is not biblical. I will humbly disagree, Mr. Speaker. Ang sabi po ng Panginoong Diyos, kung ano yung pinagsama ng Diyos, ay dapat, ay huwag papaghihiwalay ng tao. Yun lamang po, ibig sabihin. Nasa Biblia po yun. Walang sino man ang pwedeng maghihiwalay do sa pinagsama ng Diyos. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we should... Teka po, hindi pa po ako tapos, uh, hindi ka Mr. Tapos Speaker. Po. Okay. Ano po yung specialty ng, ng group na ito? Bakit hindi na lang annulment? Nandun naman po sa ating batas to eh. Bakit hindi na lang legal separation? In other words, our family code, Mr. Speaker, addresses this particular problem. And so it becomes very special if, aside from these two alternatives, there will be another one to be offered to this group of unfortunate marriages, Mr. Speaker. Now, this person is asking for biblical precept. I will contribute one, Mr. Speaker. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, tatagalugin ko na po, Mr. Speaker, para po sa ating kapakanan. Ito po is quoted from God Himself. Namumuhi ako sa diborsyo ng mag-asawa, sabi ng Panginoong Diyos ng Israel. At namumuhi ako sa taong binabalot ng karahasan ang sarili na parang nababalot ng kasuotan. Mr. Speaker, if the Lord God Himself hates divorce, sino ba tayo na mga tao lamang na nilalang niya ang siya pang gagawa ng paraan para isulong ito? Pwede po ako magsumagot? Opo. Okay. <laughs> Unang-una, we have to make a distinction between uh, the phrase till death do us part and the statement attributed to the Lord that what God has put together, no man shall separate. Itong death till death do us part, eh wala naman to sa Biblia. Sa Biblia. And I would uh, challenge the distinguished uh, Marcoleta to point to the Bible whether there is such a term there or a phrase there till death do us part. Wala po. I will accept the challenge, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, let me continue. The no, phrase, you, you are offering a challenge, uh, Your Honor. Uh, let, let me just continue before you accept the challenge. <laughs> and to the challenge. Paano po kung may bibigay ko sa inyo yung verse, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, na sinasabi na malaya lamang ang isang nag-asawa at mapuputol lamang yung band of marriage kapag patay na ang isa sa kanila. What if I am able to show you a particular biblical phrase? Will you withdraw your sponsorship, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Show it now. What is the answer, Mr. Speaker? Please show it now. If you are accepting the challenge, could you tell us where in the Bible this phrase till death do us part appears? Mr. Speaker, this representation is ready for further interpretation. Thank you very much, Mr. Sponsor, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that to recognize Representative Rodante Marcoleta, party list Sagip, for his interpolations. The Honorable Rodante Marcoleta is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I recall not a few years ago, I was invited by a dear colleague in the celebration of his 50th wedding anniversary. I would say, Mr. Speaker, I was so happy. Maybe I am so lucky also because I was one of those who was allowed to witness what I perceived to be a very organized, well-attended family rejoicing. In my recollection, Mr. Speaker, it was a very happy and ideal setting for someone who had vowed 
to cherish the institution of marriage. I am referring to the Honorable Edsel Lagman, Mr. Speaker, my good friend. When they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary, golden anniversary, with his wonderful and dear wife, Cielo. Mr. Speaker, I cannot forget an episode in that family rejoicing where a member of the family stood to describe what kind of marriage best fit the one of my dear friend Kong Edsel and his dear wife Cielo. Ang sabi niya, Mr. Speaker, I do not need a fantasy to describe how happy, how ideal this marriage is. Hindi ko po ma-recall yung ibang detalye, ngunit ako po ay sumangayon sapagkat sa nakita ko pong mga mukha ng dumalo, happy faces, talaga pong tumetestigo sa isang matagumpay na pagsasama ng dalawang mag-asawa. My question, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, bakit po kaya si Kong Edsel pa yung nag-sponsor ng isang bill? Bakit kaya hindi na lang iba sa atin? Sapagkat yung nakita ko pong katatagan, tagumpay, at isang hindi may kakailang makabuluhang pagsasama ng dalawang tao, ay hindi ko maisip kung bakit siya pa ang mag sponsor ng isang divorce bill na alam naman nating ito po ay makapagpapawalang pisa sa seremonya sa kabanalan ng pag-aasawa. May I have some comments, Mr. Speaker? Thank you for that question, Mr. Speaker. The divorce bill, once it becomes a law, is not for everybody. Majority of the marriages in the Philippines, I think overwhelming majority of the marriages of the marriages in the Philippines are enduring and loving relationship. Just like my marriage with my late wife, Cielo. And uh, to my mind, those happy marriages should not be affected by the passage of this bill. This bill is for the exceptional circumstances where marriage has hit the rocks and is beyond repair. While it is said that marriages are solemnized in heaven, some of them plummet into hell irremediably. So the state has the responsibility to secure its spouses and their children from a house on fire. This is, this is the reason why I have introduced this bill even before my wife and I celebrated our golden wedding anniversary. This is not for happy marriages. It is for marriages which have crumbled and are beyond repair so that there is need for them to be given relief or a lifeline so that they can be uh, rescued from uh, these constant conflicts which even would affect their children. Mr. Speaker, all countries in the world have legitimized divorce except the Philippines and the tiny ecclesiastical state of the Vatican. What does this mean? This means that there can be no unanimous blunder in this countries where 
divorce is allowed. And these countries will include Catholic countries and Christian countries. So in other words, divorce does not offend the Catholic or the Christian faith. And uh, we believe very strongly that thousands of women in the Philippines who are living in disastrous relationship would need this absolute divorce so that they can secure a possible second chance at marital bliss. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the sponsor admitted that divorce law or this divorce bill is not intended for everybody. That it is only targeting those marriages with peculiar characters that probably needing divorce bill. So if it is for a special group of people or marriages, Mr. Speaker, it might fall under the character of a class legislation. <laughs> and we should not do that. <laughs> Because all laws are supposed to be applicable to all citizens of this republic. We are not supposed to legislate something that should only be for use of a few, of a special class. I will not agree with the proposition, Mr. Speaker, that the divorce bill should only be for those marriages which are at the brink of collapse. Who is going to make a judgment, Mr. Speaker, that a certain marriage is now supposed to be terminated by way of a divorce? Bakit po nung itong dalawang tao na humarap po sa kabanalan ng pagsaisang dibdib, hindi po ba ang malimit nilang sinasabi for better or for worse? Sa karamdaman o sa kalusugan, till death do us part, Mr. Speaker. Hindi ba ganun po yung general premise natin? Bakit po ang daming nag-survive? And the best example is the one of the good sponsor, Mr. Speaker. Bakit hindi po ang gawin nating panuntunan? Pagtulong-tulungan po natin ang mga marriages na nahihirapan. Kung kukunti naman pala yun, and there are only special few, sabi ng ating sponsor, we're not supposed to legislate a bill that will be characterized as a class legislation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't have to teach my distinguished colleague on what is the meaning of class legislation. This is not absolute. Members of the same class who are affected by the same circumstances would not be class legislation if a law is passed for their benefit or for their needs. So this bill is not class legislation. Number two, no less than the Supreme Court and Te versus Te declared that the dissolution of a marriage is a merciful internment of a long dead marriage. What is brought before the family court is not a vibrant marriage. What is brought before the family court is the cadaver of a decaying marriage. For this reason, there is really need for the state to rescue spouses and their children from this cruel, abusive, and abandoned relationship. What do you say Till death do us part. This is not even biblical. It started in the 15th century in England as part of a literature which had been followed by subsequent generations. And the majority of marriages in the Philippines are not canonical marriages or Christian marriages. They are civil marriages. And the state can provide exceptions as a rescue for this kind of marriages which are now 
really long dead in the language of the Supreme Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yun daw pong till death do us part is not biblical. I will humbly disagree, Mr. Speaker. Ang sabi po ng Panginoong Diyos, kung ano yung pinagsama ng Diyos, ay dapat, ay huwag papaghihiwalay ng tao. Yun lamang po, ibig sabihin. Nasa Biblia po yun. Walang sino man ang pwedeng maghihiwalay do sa pinagsama ng Diyos. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we should... Teka po, hindi pa po ako tapos, uh, hindi ka pa Mr. Tapos. Speaker. Okay. Yung family code was mentioned also. I believe, Mr. Speaker, the family code offers two alternatives also. One is legal separation and annulment. What is so special about this special group of people whose marriages are so broke that they cannot do something about it? It is as if that everything else cannot cannot be sufficient to restore it or to even improve that relationship. Ano po yung specialty ng, ng group na ito? Bakit hindi na lang annulment? Nandun naman po sa ating batas to eh. Bakit hindi na lang legal separation? In other words, our family code, Mr. Speaker, addresses this particular problem. And so it becomes very special if, aside from these two alternatives, there will be another one to be offered to this group of unfortunate marriages, Mr. Speaker. Now, this person is asking for biblical precept. I will contribute one, Mr. Speaker. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, tatagalugin ko na po, Mr. Speaker, para po sa ating kapakanan. Ito po is quoted from God Himself. Namumuhi ako sa diborsyo ng mag-asawa, sabi ng Panginoong Diyos ng Israel. At namumuhi ako sa taong binabalot ng karahasan ang sarili na parang nababalot ng kasuotan. Mr. Speaker, if the Lord God Himself hates divorce, sino ba tayo na mga tao lamang na nilalang niya ang siya pang gagawa ng paraan para isulong ito? Tapos na po kayo. Baka gusto niyo sumagot muna, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. O pwede po ako magsumagot? Opo. Okay. <laughs> Unang-una, we have to make a distinction between uh, the phrase till death do us part and the statement attributed to the Lord that what God has put together, no man shall separate. Itong death till death do us part, eh wala naman to sa Biblika, sa Biblia. And I would uh, challenge the distinguished uh, Marcoleta to point to the Bible whether there is such a term there or a place there till death do us part. Wala po. I will accept the challenge, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, let me continue. The no, phrase, you, you are offering a challenge, uh, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, let, let me just continue before you accept the challenge. <laughs> the phrase, quote, until death do us part, was first popularized in this English-speaking world following the first printing of the Book of Common Prayer in England in 1549, during the time of Edward VI, when the average life span was 47 years old. Iyong ka naman ay statement ni Jesus Christ to the Pharisees ay hindi naman doctrinal or cast in stone. Because in his answer, in his conversation with the Pharisees, he said, he made an exception. The exception is, you can divorce an unchaste wife. So meron ng exception agad. And in the Pauline principles, St. Paul added another exception. A spouse who is an unbeliever and lives 
his believing spouse, the spouse left behind, can remarry and divorce the unbeliever. So there are exceptions to this. Now, in the family code, we have three modes of uh, making a marriage not subsisting. One is the dissolution of a marriage based on psychological incapacity at the time of the marriage, although manifested during the marriage. This is the canonical divorce, which has been practiced in the Catholic Church for ages. And uh, this canonical divorce uh, precedent came into the family code because of the uh, lobby of the Catholic Church. This is according to just one of the justices who was part of the committee which drafted the family code, Justice Frida Roth Romero. Now, another mode is annulment. But annulment covers causes simultaneous or prior to the marriage. It does not cover causes consequent to the marriage during cohabitation. And in most cases, the causes for divorce would be after the marriage. Now, with respect to legal separation, this is only separation from bed and board. The husband and the wife can separate, can live separately, but the marriage tie is not severed. In other words, they cannot remarry. So much so that concubinage and adultery would result, which are public offenses, because they have new and other uh, relationships. But all of these are not adequate, because we need a divorce law to cover causes during the cohabitation of the spouses. And we need a divorce law to allow the spouses to remarry. That is why we need this divorce law. Moreover, experience would show that in all of these cases of dissolution of marriage, annulment, and legal separation, they are very expensive and takes a long time. That is why we have provided in this bill a less expensive and affordable mode of marriage. And in many circumstances, it is even cost-free to the court-assisted petitioner. And we have also uh, provided in the bill that the judge of the family court will resolve the petition for divorce within one year from the expiration of this 60-day cooling off period. So that makes it affordable and expeditious. Finally, we are a secular state. The Philippines is a secular state. Under our Declaration of Principle, we have maintained that separation of church and state. While we respect the canons of the church, we should not be controlled by the canons of this church in secular matters. Because marriage is a human institution. It is subject to human frailty and mundane misgivings. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, let us go to the acceptance to my challenge, whether there is any statement in the Bible with respect to till death to us part. Before the challenge, Mr. Speaker, I need to make a refutation to the statement of the sponsor because I have not heard his comment on the verse that I cited, Malachi verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 16, when God said, For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. Question is, if God himself hates divorce, how can one of us, one of his creation, sponsor divorce? There was no specific statement made by the sponsor, Mr. Speaker. 
Secondly, again he cited that divorce, uh, that, that uh, annulment is very costly and a very long process. So why, why would you exclude? Why would you make a special and fast lane to some marriages which perceive the relationship to be in tatters? And you do not offer explanation to the rest and to all those who survived and made sure that their marriage will continue. Bakit po palaging special na lang ang treatment? Ba't kinakailangan maging mabilis para sa kanila? At hindi masyadong magastos. Bakit sa iba po nating mga nag-survive o maaring tumuloy sa either legal separation or annulment? Magastos po yun. But that is the law. Bakit bibigyan po natin ngayon ng special attention, a fast lane to these marriages? Unfortunate they may be. But I think they do not have a special place in the legislation that should be general in scope. Mr. Speaker, you know. And to the challenge, Paano po kung may bibigay ko sa inyo yung verse, Mr. Speaker, you know, na sinasabi na malaya lamang ang isang nag-asawa at mapuputol lamang yung band of marriage kapag patay na ang isa sa kanila. What if I am able to show you a particular biblical phrase? Will you withdraw your sponsorship, Mr. Speaker, you know? Show it now. What is the answer, Mr. Speaker? Please show it now. If you are accepting the challenge, could you tell us where in the Bible this phrase till death do us part appears? But anyway, uh, Mr. Speaker, when we say till death do us part, death here could be the physical cessation of life. But that also can be metaphorical. It could be the cessation of love, respect, and tolerance. That is why marriages which uh, have forfeited these qualities of love and respect and tolerance can be the subject of divorce in all of the countries in the world, except the Philippines and the Vatican, Mr. Speaker. Let, let's go back to the challenge, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Will the sponsor, Mr. Speaker, be gracious enough uh, to give me a little time because wala po palang internet dito sa loob kasi po yung aking notes nandun sa aking planner, nandun sa opisina ko, pakukuha ko lang sana. But if the sponsor will agree that if I am not able to bring to him today the particular verse in the Bible, I withdraw all my interpolation. Otherwise, if I am able to give him the complete verse in the Bible, he will withdraw his sponsorship, Mr. Speaker. I will never withdraw my sponsorship. And I am certain the distinguished gentleman cannot show any place in the Bible quoting till death do us part. On the strength but of my but oath. If, but if the gentleman cannot show this, then most probably he should vote for the bill. I want to make sure, Mr. Speaker, Nandun po sa planner ko kasi, sinukulat ko na po kaninang umaga eh. I want to make sure, ayaw ko pong magkamali. Kaya kung papayag po kayo, magkaibigan naman po tayo eh. Bigyan nyo lang po ako ng ilang uh, minuto para makuha ko po yung aking yes, planner. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, he can get that. It should not be counted against my time. So, kailan ko po pwedeng ibigay sa inyo? Eh, dasan po yung planner ninyo? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, may I uh, terminate my interpolation for a while? until I was able to get my planner.
Yes, of course. Uh, majority. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. To suspend Mr. Session. Speaker, I move that to suspend the interpolations. Yeah, uh, session uh -huh. is suspended. I believe uh, Honorable Marcoletta was recognized earlier. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I apologize for the delay. Fortunately, I was able to retrieve the, uh, the verse that I have cited. Mr. Speaker, I'm citing 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39, which reads, and I quote, A woman is obligated to stay in her marriage as long as her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free to marry whomever she wants. Only it should be believer in the Lord. So till death do us part talaga. Kailangang mamatay po yung isa para lang makapag-asawa ka pa ng iba. Salamat po, Mr. Speaker. And I think my good friend is honorable enough to accept the challenge. I accepted the challenge and I think it is for him to withdraw his sponsorship. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what the distinguished uh, interpreter quoted is not the praise till death was part. In fact, what he said was only with respect to the woman, not to the husband. It is here that when the husband dies, the woman can remarry. But it would be better if she does not remarry. That is completely different from till death does part, which is addressed to both the husband and the wife. But as I've said, death here could be physical cessation of life or a metaphor that love, respect, and tolerance in the marriage had already ceased. And there is no way of reconciling these spouses. I am ready to answer the next question, if any. Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker. Well, yes, uh, Honorable Marcoleta, please proceed. Mr. Speaker, I did not know that my good friend, the sponsor, is after the exact word, till death do us part. But it was only a matter of romanticizing it, Mr. Speaker. The couple are before, or is before, the solemnizing priest or anyone who is in a position to celebrate the marriage. So until death do us part, is to romanticize the impending relationship. But the biblical anchor is the same, Mr. Speaker. I hope my good friend could comprehend the simple import of this particular biblical passage. It is still, till death do us part. Kahit balibalik tarin mo ito, Mr. Speaker. It cannot be interpreted in another way. I rest my, my case, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your interpolation. And uh, Mr. Speaker, even if we accept the annotation of the distinguished uh, Margoleta, it will not deny the fact that all Catholic countries who believe in the Bible have their own divorce laws in varying degrees of liberality. Only the Philippines and the Vatican do not have such divorce laws. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, distinguished uh, Margoleta, for your homily. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Sponsor, and then to the distinguished interpolator. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the suspension of the consideration of House Bill number 9349. Is there any objection? Chair hears none. The motion is approved.